Good morning and good after or good afternoon, depending upon where you are. My name is Tara. I manage the educator community and I am so excited to have you all. We will be getting started shortly, but as we are coming into this um, product webinar, if you could just drop into chat where you are from your district and um, the city you're in. And if I, if I can't tell from your district name, I'd love to see where our audience is from. Welcome, welcome. And we are actually using a new platform today. So um, I'm excited about it and I am going and I'm learning it like live right now. So um, I am ex hoping to see, there we go, the chat happening soon. Oh, nice. I'm glad we've got folks coming in. Okay, thank you. Again, if you're just um, joining, welcome, welcome to our, um, our first product webinar. We're featuring manager in this series. And my name is Tara. I um, We're going to be starting in just a moment. If you have an opportunity and you can, you're able to type it, I would love for you to drop in the chat where you're from. Your district and the city would be awesome. I'm in California, so I did say good morning, but to my East Coasters or Midwest folks, good afternoon. Oh, we've got Canada. Nice, nice, nice. Love to see that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. We have our, we've got a nice group. I'm going to go ahead and get started on housekeeping items before I introduce the true star, Haley. I'm so happy to have her back um, to do our product webinar series around manager. But before we get started, um, most of you already know that I manage the community. And you also probably know if you've been in our digital workshops or another product webinar, love, love, love to give things away. And I would love to be able to share a gift card with you or gift card or two, three, depending upon how much engagement we have. And so I want you guys to know how you can be a part of all of that. And so I'm going to put into chat where I'm going to be going. And that is our EDU site. And so let me go ahead and share my screen so I can take you there. Okay, you are seeing my screen, yes? Awesome. This is our um, education web page, and the banners that are running give you a really good sneak peek around what's going on in the educator community. We have our um, ambassador, which is always running. Are we good? Um, we have our ambassador program, which is always running. That is a way that you can really deep dive into the community, but also be that um, spokesperson in your district as well. So encourage that. Um, we've got our um, refer a friend program, our expert academy, which will be happening in December. Registration is now open, so I encourage you to look into that. This was our um, teacher care package sweepstakes. Hopefully you took advantage of this. Um, our district spotlight, which has um, shined a bright light on Salina City Elementary School District. Um, we just so excited to bring this to you and um, be able to really have you all have kind of that front row seat at their um, implementation story. So I encourage you to read that. I know there's something within that um, article that'll resonate with you. And then our back to school um We've got a lot of cool back to school things happening and we have our sweepstakes that are that's happening now every friday i am giving away a hundred dollar gift card we here at viewsonic 
and in the educator community want to help you get your, um, your toolkit together. So I'm going to take you guys into the educator community. It's this tab here. It's off of any of those banner pages. This tab will take you directly into the community if you are a member already. And if you are a member, I'm going to make sure I'm sharing this page. There we go. If you are a member, it will take you directly to this page here. If you're not a member just yet, you're going to come right here and you're going to sign in. And the reason you'll need to sign in is because when you sign in, it allows you to engage in the community and in, in the thread. And engaging in this particular thread, which is here, this is the session we're in now, will allow you to participate in our gift -to gram giveaway at the end of the session. OK, so again, if you're a member, it'll take you right in and you'll know you're in because you'll see a thumbnail of either your first initial or your picture. If you're not in just yet, you'll sign in. I promise it will take under a minute to fill this out. Um, it, there is a single sign on through your My View Board access. But where I need you to be for the purpose of our gift to gram giveaway at the end of the session is here. You're going to come right into this particular thread. And I've already put one comment here. You can share your thoughts here. At the end of the session, I will take a look, see how many we have. If we still, if we have just a handful, typically I'll give you another hour to drop a reflection, a comment here. And then I will pull names, or actually I'll enter the names of everyone who's responded into this thread into our wheel of names and that is how i find my winner so i hope you take an opportunity to engage in the community and post any of your reflection comments here so that i can put you into the wheel of names i am my housekeeping items are done and so i'm going to introduce haley um, I am so excited. Haley's one of our own, our one of our product managers, and she, as as many of you all have already known and seen, is truly an expert. And so she's bringing to us a manager. And so, without any further ado, Miss Haley. Oh, one thing, one other housekeeping item. Please, please, please feel free to um, go ahead and put your questions into chat. And at the end of our time together, we will have a complete Q&A, which will ensure that all of your questions get addressed. OK. All right. I'm really going to be quiet this time. Miss Haley, thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today. We have a really full session for us today. We're going to be talking about Manager by ViewSonic. So this might be an introduction to all of you. And so what I have is I have a set of slides that I've already put into my view board that we're going to use to go through the session today. And I'm going to use it to present on this topic. So two, two birds and one stone. I'm showing off my view board, which we have plenty of other webinars that we've done in the past. Um, I've been um, proud enough to be able to um, be here with all of you with um, past webinars going through my view board. So if that's something you want to check out because you see something that you're interested in, please visit our YouTube channel or educator community like Tara mentioned and rewatch some of those old webinars. But the session today is all about manager. So if you are brand new here, welcome. We are going to be going through what this product is, how to use some of the features, and then later on I'm going to be talking about a quiz that we have. So if you have joined us in past webinars for my view board, we like to do a small little game towards the end just to check for understanding in true education fashion. And from there, we're going to go back to Tara for community. So let's go ahead and get started. A couple of things. I want to first start with just an overview and an introduction to ViewSonic Manager. As many of you, this might be the very first time that you've heard of this product from ViewSonic. You might have our interactive boards in your classrooms or in your districts, um, but this is a product that is intended to help aid you, your IT administrative team, and even your on-site crew to be able to manage your devices. So a couple of things that we want to talk about too is 
we have device groups. So I'm going to go into more depth in a little bit on all of these topics, but just to lay the groundwork of what we're going to expect today, we have things like how to do remote firmware updates, how to use a remote control, not an actual physical remote control on the device, but actually from your computer, from anywhere that you are. You can also learn how to manage apps and security on the displays themselves, and then also a little bit about broadcast message. So let's take a look about an overview of what Manager is. So if you have not seen Manager before, this is available in the myviewboard.com dashboard. You do need to be an administrator of your entity to be able to access it. But what it is, it's a, a free complimentary version that allows you to remotely monitor and control your devices from wherever you are. So you could be on site at your school if you have a large district. You could also be from any other campus wherever you are and still control those devices. A couple of other things. You can access it all through a cloud-based platform. So it is going to be browser-based. So as long as you have an internet connection, you will be able to access Manager and be able to look at the devices that you've already set up. So I've included an image here. As you know, ViewSonic has many different types of actual hardware products. Manager is the software that supports it. So what you may not know is that your interactive displays, commercial displays, even projectors can be remotely controlled through Manager. So Manager is already pre-installed on those interactive displays and those commercial displays. And this complimentary version is there for you to start playing with. So hopefully from this session, you'll learn a little bit more. Maybe you will um, take the leap of faith and try it out for yourself. So basically what you can do is you can send messages, urgent alerts, which we are going to have an entire webinar session later on about. But these are all of the main things that you can expect with Manager. Some of the things that we see our users um, loving about Manager are going to be with remote control, which I'm gonna be talking about in a little bit, um, but also just the fact that they can look at all of the devices that they're managing, be able to see diagnostic information like the IP address, the MAC address. Being able to see all of this allows you to have a better idea of how the investments that you have in these devices are holding up, how you can work with them, if you need to manage them, fix them, call someone in for support, this is a great place to go. Because you might have many devices in your district or even on your campus in general, um, you may need a better way to organize your devices. So with Manager, you have the ability to simplify by using device groups. So now those device groups allow you to manage either a single device, a small group of devices, or all of the devices that you have within Manager. How this could look, I've included a couple of examples. So a single device in a classroom could be sent specific information. You could also create an entire group based on one building. In that building, it might be specific to a campus. Maybe it's a specific class grade. Maybe it's an entire um, group of students who are all learning the same subject really depends on how you and your district or even just your school board has decided to best organize your campus. But of course, if you have an important message or if you want to turn on, turn off the displays, you know, use that remote control that we're going to look at in a little bit, you would be able to send it all to all the devices at once. So with this, we're going to be looking at what remote control actually does. So you're able to send commands on demand with this remote control from your computer. So instead of being physically in the room and having a physical remote in your hands, you would be able to access any device from wherever you are from your computer. So if I'm not able to go on site, I would be able to look at my device from this awesome device list here. So this is a preview of what you can expect from Manager. As you can see, there are specific details and information that I have access to. So I can see things like the device name. I can see what model it is. 
and I can also see the status of the display as well. Gray means that it's offline, green means it's online, and red would mean that there is a broadcast happening on that display. So I have that diagnostic information like I talked about earlier, like the local IP address. This can be really important for your IT teams, um, but there's more information that you're able to drop down into. So to demonstrate this, I'm gonna use the Windows toggle in my view board, and I'm gonna go back onto this screen. So now we're in a live demo of our dashboard. So as you can see, again, we have all of the devices listed here. We got the status. But one thing that you can note is by clicking on the display, I get all of this device information available to me. So this information is really good so I can see if the device is up to date by the operating system, the firmware version, which we're gonna be talking about later. And I can have all of this information readily available at my fingertips without having to go to the physical panel, go into settings and navigate down. Mm. So what I could do too, beyond that, I'm gonna exit out of here, is if I select the device, a remote control is going to pop up. So this remote control allows me to physically change any device by using this control. So I have things like, I can mute it, I can change the volume, change brightness, um, power off. I can also restart the device. This is great if you are experiencing any issues with the device and want to do a manual reboot. There are plenty of other tools available in this remote control. One of the main ones that people love to use is this schedule startup and shutdown. So just to point that out right here, the schedule startup and shutdown right here allows you to actually create a schedule for each device without having to rely on the user. So in this case, probably a teacher in front of class to remember to turn on their panel at the beginning of the day, or even just to remember to turn it off before leaving to go home. This is really great tool because it allows you to have multiple schedules for each of your panels. Um, and this can be unique. Each panel can have a different startup and shutdown time, or you can apply it to those groups that we talked about earlier. So maybe every, uh, every device on your campus maybe needs to power on and power off at the same time. Or maybe if you have different classrooms with different learners, um, maybe you need a, an extended period to be able to power off the display. The great thing with this is that by turning off the display and creating a schedule, it reduces that stress without having to remember, but it also allows you to save on the backlight of the panel. So by turning it off, the panel is allowing to rest. Um, also, it's going through a reboot at this time so that it is refreshing its memory and any bugs that you may have are being turned off. Um, by turning it off, it allows it to refresh but it also helps save with energy costs. So by turning off the display at the end of the day, you're saving on that energy. So especially when it comes to budget times with your schools, um, this might be a great talking point um, and definitely something that we highly recommend and probably one of the most used features within Manager. But again, you have all of these tools. For instance, Screen Lock. Screen Lock is a great tool if you want to lock all of the screens in something like lunchtime. So for example, if you do not want students to um, have access to any displays during a certain period of time, screen lock is a great way to go and only the administrator or the teacher would be able to unlock the screen. So this keeps the campus on safety and also allows them to have a little more control of the devices. So a little bit of peace of mind comes with using manager as well. But all of these are really great tools to be able to have access at your fingertips using remote control. So I'm gonna go back to my presentation here and I am just going to navigate using this infinite canvas hand. As you can see, we've gone through a lot of the remote control and just from this view all in one screen, you can see there are many different ways that you can actually access and control the device. For more information, you can always access our knowledge base, which we'll link out to you later today. Um, but that is also a really great tool to help you learn how to use each of these features. Mm. Haley, 
Um, yes. And I think you're doing that now, just a, mm -hmm. a quick review. But I noticed that one um, particular audience member had had perhaps missed how to access manager and connect devices on their sure. campus. Do you mind just reviewing that really quick? Absolutely. Thank you, Haley. So my viewboard manager is available on myviewboard.com. So just to access that for all of your information, you would go to myviewboard.com as seen on my screen right here. Make sure that you sign in with your credentials that are tied to your entity account. If you are unfamiliar with the entity account name, that is just what we call internally at ViewSonic, the organization that you're a part of. So this might be your school district, or it might be your particular school, depending on how your school has set up. If you have any questions, please reach out to your administrative team. Um, this is usually the owner and they would be able to help you figure this out. But from the dashboard here, you're gonna have access to all of these tiles. Now, one thing that I do want to mention is that earlier I talked about you have to be an admin of your entity to have the manager tile appear. So I'll back up one further step. If you are in charge um, of, of creating those admin user access for the users, let me walk you through how you can revise that. So you would go over to entity management. So again, this needs to be done by a, an admin in your entity. But from this admin side, I would be able to access all of the users and I would be able to change their roles. So from here, I would be able to go from an admin or a user. So the distinction here is that an admin is able to access entity management, which we're in currently, access manager and also change user roles. What I mentioned earlier is there might be a owner and that is the owner that has set up your entity with ViewSonic. Now, this is usually your IT team, or it could also be um, a key purchaser. So if you don't know who it is, um, a great person to begin with is if you know who is um, in charge of your IT purchases or decision making, they might know. If not, we can always help um, connect you with the correct, uh, the correct owner. So if you provide us with your entity name, we would be able to help you access that as well. But once you have admin access, now you will be able to access manager. So when I go back to the manager site, all I have to do is click on the manager tile and that brings me directly back into manager. So I already have this tab open. Um, here, this is where you're going to be able to access it. Now, I did think I heard a question about actually adding devices. So I was going to talk about this a little bit later on, but this is a great start to talk about it right now. So what we can do is, as you can see from this all device page, I would be able to add a device. So I can either add a group or add a single device here. A couple of things to note is that I can add a device directly from a manual input, or I can access through serial numbers or a device list. So for example, you have two options to do it manually. The first one is by a pin code. So what we talked about earlier is that all of your interactive displays and commercial displays have a manager app preloaded on the screen by accessing that application, you have access to a pin code. So once you access it for the first time, it will provide you with the six digit pin. You would be able to input that string of numbers or text. Note, it is case sensitive. So if you do not put a lowercase where it's needed or an uppercase, you might run into some is issues. So just, just a um, brief disclaimer there, um, you would be able to access it by using the pin code. Now, as we saw in the device, we're able to see things like the device name. So this is optional, but this might help you be a little bit more organized, especially when you do those remote control commands later on. You can also create a group or add it to a pre-existing group from your dropdown. 
So again, this is another great way to organize the devices. If you don't see the PIN code, but your team has access to a serial number, you can do the same process, just putting the string of numbers in here. A faster way would be to import a device list. This is going to pull up your access to your files, but I do want to note that there is a shortcut that is going to make your life a lot easier. If you hover over these, uh, this question mark directly here, you are going to be able to download a template file. Note the template file does change whether you're in the pin or, your, or the serial number. So typically I would recommend navigating to the serial number, going down again to that question mark, and this pop-up is going to appear that's going to allow you to download this template file. Now your team is able to input the string of serial numbers that they've received from their um, procurement team. You might also be able to create your device name. You can add asset tags and you can put it directly from a group in this document here. So this is going to save your team plenty of time. Um, the last option, and I'm not gonna spend too much time on the last option, but this is something that you are able to use using a mobile phone. So if you are not familiar, we also have a companion app that allows you to access and scan a code directly from your mobile device from each panel. So that's gonna be more of an on-site uh, manual process, but doing the devices can all be done again remotely using this method. So now that we have a better idea of how to onboard, let's get back to some of the main features that we wanna look at. So once you've added your devices, you have your groups set up and you have um, ensured that you have access to these devices, now you can do things like remotely update firmware. Now, this is not the most exciting feature of Manager by any means, but it is one of the more important ones. And for this, the IT teams find lots of use in being able to remotely push these firmware updates. Now, this is a very handy feature that is going to ensure that your device is working properly. We as a company come up with updates, bug improvements, um, and we push those out through these firmware updates. Now, these are also going to ensure that the application directly on your panels are also working properly. properly. This can include manager, so just making sure that that manager app is working as, as expected, but it also is going to make improvements to my viewboard and also things like casting with vcast and many, many more features directly on screen. So we do highly recommend that if your display is not on the latest firmware, to always check it. And the easiest way to do that is through manager. There are three distinct ways that you can do a update for this firmware update from manager. Now, of course, you always have the option to sign up for OTA updates or over the air updates that are going to happen automatically in the background. However, some users like to disable this and have a little bit more control of when those firmware pushes go out. This could be for a variety of reasons. One of those could be that they want to make sure that the firmware update does not interfere with any teaching. So maybe they want to schedule it over a long weekend when there are not going to be students on campus, or they could just do it maybe during the summer or extended vacation breaks. It is completely up to you. And again, these products are intended to help aid you, not to hinder. So it's this option allows you the flexibility to figure out what works for you. So there's three main ways directly from manager that you can use to update your firmware. The first one is through a manual update. So you could go to a single display or a group of displays and update the firmware on command. So what this means is you would go to the specific device, you would select it, and you would select from the remote control the ability to update that firmware. Now you would just hit the update now, but you also have the option to use an automatic firmware update. So what this is going to do is that every time a firmware update is available, it is going to push out to the displays. However, if you would rather have it on a schedule like we talked about earlier, 
There's a variety of reasons for any of these options. The schedule is going to allow you to schedule it ahead of time. Again, let's look at what this could look like. So when I'm on this screen, I would be able to access again by checking this box and scroll down to the update firmware option. You're going to see that this provides a drop down that's going to allow me to update directly now. But one thing to note is you're going to see an update from external source and a URL. Please note that this is an advanced feature and is only compatible with a few devices. However, if you would rather like to schedule something event in advance, you have this option down here for auto firmware update. This is where you're going to access the scheduling. And once I do this toggle, you're going to see a schedule is going to pop up and you have the freedom to choose which days, multiple days even, and a specific time. So this is all available in Manager. And again, one of the great tools is being able to select a device and see the current firmware version. If you need to reach out to our support team, giving them this firmware version is always a great place to start and you can always access it again from the manager dashboard on each device. Great place to start for any troubleshooting requirements. Let's go back to our features. So now that we've covered firmware updates, look, let's look at what else you can do to manage your devices. So now you have the ability to access all of these applications on your interactive board currently. However, there is an easier way to manage or install these applications besides having to go to each panel one by one. And again, that is through Manager. And the great thing about this is that you have three groups that you're able to control. And those are going to be the ViewSonic apps, which includes Manager, My View Board, which I'm using currently, um, the display, and then also some other main tools that are intended to help aid either in your teacher's lessons or even just day-to-day -day operations. We do also have a group of third-party approved applications like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Gboard, and many, many more directly available in Manager currently. And lastly, you have the option to upload your own apps. So as long as you have an APK, you're able to upload your own applications. This is something that many schools might have a specific application that they're using on a daily basis. As long as you're able to have that file readily available, you can upload it from your, um, your device and add it to any display. The great thing about this is that instead of having to go again one by one to each panel, I can upload it to your manager and push it out to however many displays or groups of displays that I want. So again, when we're talking about manager, it's always going to be on the admin side. So the administrators are able to remotely install the apps onto one or more device directly through manager on command. And this command can be sent directly from two places. It can be from the main toolbar, which I'll show you in a little bit, or from the device list on the device information page. So let's go over here. So to demonstrate, I have a device that I am checking here. One place that you're going to go to is this small grid of squares that I'm hovering over with my cursor to access the apps. You're going to see three options to install, uninstall, and manage. So how do we have the ability to make sure that we are installing the proper apps? So when I install, there is going to be a long list of applications that I have available to me to be able to sort through. Of course, I can always use the search and go through from each of these to be able to access which application I want. But beyond that, I would be able to install directly from here. Another place that is good to know is that on the left side on this toolbar that I'm looking at right now is that same exact square grid, which is apps. This is just how you can view what applications are available to you. And if you are interested in uploading your own APK, you're going to hover over to the uploaded apps and you're going to add the application here. So again, just make sure that you have the browser um, open with the correct file and it's going to upload. You do 
um, have a limited amount of storage with the complementary version. So that is something to note. Um, but from this, you're going to be able to find your groups or multiple displays. And as you can see, I can always go back to the apps and manage. So that is the applications feature within Manager. Well, let's move on to our next one. And this one is probably one that we also see used very often, and this is message broadcast. So I've included a couple screenshots to show you what this would look like. But first and foremost, what is broadcast? Broadcast is the feature tool that we use to talk about anything that is being sent from manager directly to a panel. So in my example, you have access to a basic text-based broadcast message with the complementary version of Manager. So what this is going to be for my example, in this basic standard message, you could use it to send a specific message to a panel or a specific classroom. So in this use case, I have said, please send Billy to the office. Now this could be sent by the secretary in your school office or an administrative team. Um, and be able to send it to the correct panel. Once this sends, this is a preview. So mind you, this gray text box will not be on the screen. I was using one of our advanced features to remote desktop into the panel to see what it would look like. Um, but if you ignore that gray text box, what you would see is a message notification with the text that was sent directly to the panel. One other key feature that I want to mention is this X right here. This is a very handy feature that might be overlooked, but this allows the teacher to disable the message once the message has been read. Of course, this is intended so that it's not to interfere with a lesson by any means. The intention here is to provide um, information or a quick reminder directly to the teacher or students in a classroom and then allow them to get right back into teaching without interfering with any of their plans. So again, if we were to look at some of the reasons why people would want to use this, it could be for announcements, reminders, or even just requests like sending a student to the office or providing a teacher with a substitute things like that. This provides um, a greater option to have that visual um, cue, especially when a teacher is in the classroom. And if they're in the front of the classroom writing on the board, this might get their attention better than a, you know, a faulty intercom system, which is difficult to hear, or even using student runners. Um, this could use many different use cases and make it a little bit easier and a little more helpful for all of those involved. So messages can be sent directly from the manager console to any display or a group of displays. So if you want to send the same announcement to all of the teachers, you would be able to send it to that group. And the great thing about allowing them to, to dismiss the message is that each person can read the message on their own terms and at their own speed. So this is a really great tool. I would highly recommend trying this out. Um, but if you are interested in learning about how you can send things like Google Slides or YouTube videos or other live stream broadcasted messages, stay tuned because we're going to have an entire webinar session on that later on. So overall, this is message broadcast. This is available on the complimentary version, and this is going to be able to allow you to have a little more co communication from wherever you are. As we wind down, I do wanna go through some resources right before we get into our game, but a couple of things that are really important to note is that we did cover a lot of information today. Um, we saw some of the main features on the complimentary version of Manager that you all have access to right now with an entity account. All you would need to do is just, again, make sure that you are set up as an admin if you need to access this. But if you wanna learn how you can usually use Manager, we have a great YouTube channel with how to's, um, tutorials, short videos on how to set up your Manager console, how to set up users, 
This is a great tool if you need to reference. Um, and we also have things for troubleshooting as well. And then because you are all here, you are already aware of our educator community. I won't speak too much about this because Tara will probably talk about this more, but because you are here, that means that you are part of our community already. And we do definitely recommend this for connecting with your, your peers, but this is also a great place to talk about best practices and things that you recommend with using Manager. So if you are brand new, that's a great place to check to see how your peers are using it currently. Of course, if you need a little bit more hands-on teaching, we also have a professional development course and we have one specifically for using Manager as well. So this is a great way to um, get all of the um, people on site that need access to Manager who weren't able to join today, be able to get a hands-on training that is customized to your organization and allows them to have that one-on-one -on -one where you can ask all of the questions, especially get to questions that I might not get to today. Definitely a great thing that I would recommend. So now we have covered a lot, but I would love to get into a game. Haley, before we yes. start our game, can we get a few questions addressed? Of course. Is that, is that okay? Yes. Okay. I I think the game is the best part I for those of you who've done product webinars. And so I just want to ensure these questions get addressed. Okay. I have one here. How do we know that our district is using the manager currently? Is there a clue to see? Um, and and I, I I feel like you touched upon that, but I just want to ensure if if there's um, an icon or anything. I think this is um, from one of our audience members. Um, also, would having the manager allow us to update the software remotely? Sure. So for the first question, one of the ways that you would be able to tell is from that myviewboard.com dashboard. If you see the manager tile. Um, when you select it, it is going to show you um, if you have access to that um, software, it's going to show you the devices. Now, in some cases, you might have access to manager, but your school is not actively using it. Then in that case, then I would talk to your, your team who is normally in charge of your hardware. So maybe the team that is helping you if you have any troubleshooting questions, I would reach out to them or you could talk to your um, principal or someone who is in charge of procurement or key purchasing decisions, and they would be able to help you. Now, the next question, um, could you repeat that one, Tara? I think you said, sure. can we remotely update? Yes. Um, would having manager allow us to update the software remotely? My viewer. Sure. Which software are we talking about? Did are you referring to my view board or manager? I don't know if that manager. Manager. Yes. Okay. So yes, um, the manager client is already going to receive over the air updates. So this is going to happen in the back end. However, if you do have a problem with the manager client, you can always push a new version out just to make sure that is up to date. So anytime that we have an update to manager, which happens around a quarterly basis, that is going to be refreshed with the newest and latest version. So that is going to be able to be there for you. Perfect. Thank you for that. And I have another question. Can teachers access this remote feature or only the administrator? That's a great question. And to answer it, I really have to know how your school is set up with manager. It is going to be up to that team who is managing manager to see if they provide you access. So we do see a wide use case where, for instance, some teachers have access to manager, but they only have access to a few things in manager. Mm -hmm. Now that's part of permissions, which is an advanced feature. Um, we're going to talk about that later on in a webinar, but on a base level, I would say talk to your school, try to figure out who the main owner is for the account and figure out if they would be willing to provide you access. Um, it is going to be on a case by case basis, um, but we do see some schools utilizing it in that way. Awesome. Thank you. And I have another 
question here. Perfect. My education organization has 246 view boards. Oh my. And wow. county as we get more installed in our schools and locations. So are they wondering about, oh, how do we update the firmware on our view boards without having to access, having access to manager advance? Sure. Yes. So you can have um, the firmware update. Again, you can choose to have it um, automatically scheduled. So this is available on the panels right now. Um, if you enable that firmware update, it is going to automatically do it. Um, you can send the firmware directly um, and push it out from the, the base level or the complementary version of manager. And again, you can do it by selecting the groups. Um, that one is going to be looking again in the back end for those updates. Um, but if you have specific information, we do have a whole field solutions team who can help you get the correct firmware package. Um, what I would recommend is reaching out to our customer support team and we would be able to connect you with that field solutions team and they can help work on that package with you. Um, if you need additional support without using Manager Advanced, for example, we can help provide someone that is going to walk you through those steps. Thank you for that. Also, our virtual office hours, we have a live field solution person with us during that time period. So please kind of check out the community for that so that you can get your questions addressed and get the setup you need as Haley suggested. And then I see this one, is there a recommended place to get official APKs to upload for view boards? That is a great question. Um, that is something that I will need to look for. I know that we have plenty of groups that are using APKs right now. Um, and that is a really great question. We should probably get that resource available on the community probably maybe some recommendations of places where people go. I know that some of our users um, have a custom app that they've been using for years and they just bring it along with them. So it's a place where they're already accessing it, but maybe that's something we can kind of get in the community and pull together some resources to figure out where people uh, like to get those from. Awesome. And Okay, I'm just make, I'm, I'm going through. Um, as far as the knowledge base is concerned, we're gonna show you in just a moment um, before we wrap up how to get back into the knowledge base to answer um, any of your additional questions that you might have. And let's see, my viewboard software is not up to date in many of our sites and we need to do it manually. Can the manager do this remotely? Will it be able to do this remotely for us? It was a great question too. Um, I would have to ask another question as well. So I'll, I'll walk you through a couple of these. So if you're using it on the Android side of the panel, so basically when you turn on the panel, there is a My View Board application. And if you don't change the inputs um, and you go directly to that application, then yes, you can update that one by pushing it through Manager. However, if you're using the My View Board software on something like a personal device, such as a Chromebook or a Windows PC, that will not be managed by manager. Instead, you would use something like Google Workspace to push it out or a Microsoft um, controller that would also allow you to push it out. Um, so it really depends on what the device is. Um, if you're doing it on the Android side, then yes, you can definitely use manager for that. Awesome. Thank you for that. Hopefully that addressed your question, Nicolina. And my final question, it looks like it's from Russell on the update process of the boards. Is there any backup of the old configuration as part of the process? Yes, that is a great question. And I will use the Windows toggle again just to show you real quick. Um, there is a backup and restore option directly available in Manager. And you have the option to choose if you're going to have it um, back up either on a schedule or automatically. It is completely up to you. Definitely recommend setting up an automatic schedule so that it's constantly refreshing. Or if you have a preferred state, save that. But as we've been talking about, there is a complimentary version and there is an advanced version. The advanced version is a paid version, but you do get more upgrades like we talked about with 
the broadcasting, but one of those other features is you get more slots to be able to save backup and restore points. Within the complementary version, you get one backup and restore point to always reference. So if you need to store multiple at different time, that's where advanced comes in, but no worries, complementary version still also has an option for you. Awesome. Thank you. Wow, Haley. And thank you, audience. I love all the questions. Appreciate the level of engagement. Um, Haley has her game, her famous game. We're going to have her get that started now, and then we'll finish up with some housekeeping. Go ahead, Haley. Thanks. Okay, perfect. So we got 10 minutes. Let's try to see <laughs> if we can send the little finch home. <laughs> okay, so we have a couple of tools. I always like to add this into our My Viewboard sessions, especially just using some of the tools that you have available in the lesson planning portion of our software. But I thought that because this is a community event that we should also include a game. It seems to be a favorite, so let's get started. I'm going to be asking specific questions about manager. And what I want is if you're able to answer the question in the chat, I will either roll the dice or spin the wheel. So let's get started. My very first question is true or false? True or false? Oh, excuse me. We are going, yes, sorry. I was making sure that we are putting in the right space. So yes, please put your answer in and we are going to put it over. Okay, first question, true or false? ViewSonic Manager allows me to organize devices into groups. True or false? I feel like I need some Jeopardy music. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to wait for all of your responses to come in. True or false? View Sonic Manager allows me to organize devices, so the interactive panels or commercial displays, into groups. I'll wait for true perfect awesome so let's go ahead and roll the dice and see how far we go six that was pretty good for the first one nice three, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. perfect okay my next question how do i access view sonic manager how do i access that was actually an audience question too. <laughs> Let's see if people were paying attention. Yes. <laughs> How do I access ViewSonic Manager? Who remembers? <clears throat> now you can say the specific place you go to access it on your computer. Or we also talked about talking to people. So just think, how how would I access ViewSonic Manager? <clears throat> and sorry, there is a little bit of a delay coming in on our end with all of your responses. Um, no worries there, but we're just going to take a little brief pause to allow you to give um, each of you time to answer the question before we send the Finch home. Perfect. We have the My View Board portal, and that's exactly correct. So let's go Yay. ahead and in. Okay, let's see what do we land on? Three. Okay, not not too bad. One, two, three. I have my little uh, guides up. Okay, another true or false. Displays, so the interactive panels or view boards cannot be remotely turned off in Manager. True or false. So can the view boards be turned off in Manager? or not. So true or false. Mm -hmm. 
And again, just going to give a little bit of time for each of you to put your answers in the chat. There is a little bit of a delay, but no worries. We will get the Finch home eventually. <laughs> False. That is exactly correct. You can turn off the displays within keyboard. Oh, one. Not very far. I think, I think that one deserves a second roll. I'm going to say five. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Next question. What feature would you use to send a message to a display? Hmm. Let's see if you remember the name. Yes. Love what that. feature would you use to send a message to a display in the classroom? Knowing the names to the features is also very helpful because it will allow you to easily access those videos in YouTube or even access to articles and knowledge base. Yeah. So I would definitely recommend getting a custom, a custom to each of the feature names. And this is just maybe a great reminder for you if you forgot the name, um, that this is a, gr a great tool that you should um, try to remember. So it makes it easy on you in the long term. Absolutely. So I'll repeat the question. What feature would you use to send a message to a display in the classroom? Broadcast. That's exactly right. Great job. So let's go ahead and spin. Let's see where we end up. Okay, what do we need? Yes, we did it. Okay, we've sent the Finch home. Good job, everyone. Thanks for playing along with my game. I'm going to pass it back over to Tara, but it's been a pleasure being with all of you today. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Haley. And thank you all. You got all the answers correct, which is amazing. Um, like I said, I have had, we, this is quite the um, engaged, interactive audience, and we appreciate that. We appreciate your um, giving us this time. Before we close out, I would love to just go back to the community here. Um, one second, let me just get us back there. Okay, you guys are seeing my screen and I see that we have a couple of folks have responded in the thread. I'm going to go ahead and leave this open for another hour. So it will give you an opportunity to, again, just um, a reflection, a comment, um, I, again, we appreciate Haley so much and, and the wisdom that she brings and just really enlightening us around getting started with manager. Again, this is just the complimentary version. As Haley already alluded to, the community does serve as a another layer of support. OK, and um, within the community, you have this thread that's starting here that will help around um, collaboration. But any thread, um, this is this is really what it's for. It serves as a um, another tool to collaborate with your peers, to collaborate with us at ViewSonic um, to get your questions addressed. Also, we have our product form. Notice that we have a product form specific to manager. OK, and so um, as Haley also alluded to, we have a knowledge base devoted to help you to give you kind of that um, access at your fingertips on demand to um, items within the um, within the manager. This is our um, this is our knowledge base that you're seeing on the screen now. Haley mentioned about um, holding on to some of those keywords, those buzzwords um, that we that were brought up in the review game, because that's what you can just type in here, like broadcast, for example. And that will take me to articles um, around the around broadcast specifically. So I just want to get you, just to familiarize you with the resource that the community does bring um, to give you access uh, to such things as the knowledge base, such things as our product form, as well as being able to um, collaborate with your peers. Lastly, I mentioned that 
We do have our, um, our virtual office hours. So if you have additional questions that did not get addressed or come to mind after our time together is, um, is finished, I would definitely recommend that you um, join us at the end of the month where we will have our, um, our virtual office hours. Haley's gonna be back next month. Um, we are going to be featuring our um, emergent, I'm sorry, our urgent alerts, forgive me, our urgent alerts will be the topic of our next manager um, product webinar in September. It is actually um, going to be September 19th. You'll definitely see um, information about that. You'll have an opportunity to register and join us again for another product webinar. I am just going to quickly check over. Nicolina says, I can't find the session in the community. Oh, my bad. Let me go ahead and take you there. Oh, we've answered it. Oh, perfect. Okay, my thank you. It's been addressed. Okay, thank you all. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your active participation. And I look forward to seeing you in our next product webinar on Manager September 19th. There'll be registration information in the community soon. And don't forget, I'm going to leave that thread open for another hour, at which point I will announce my gift card winners right there in the community. And if you are the winner, you know that you um, or you may or may not know that your gift card will come to you via email. Whatever email is attached to your community handle is where your gift card will come to the winner. Again, thank you, Haley, and thank you all. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.